Hello, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to check out something coming soon in Blender 2.8, and as you can tell by the title here, it is going to be epic. Now, I'm a bit of a cheerleader for Blender. I love the fact that it's free and accessible, but it's actually improved incrementally in the last couple of years. When in Blender 2.4 was the norm, I really couldn't stand using Blender, to be honest. I did everything in my power to not. Then 2.5 improved it quite a bit, 2.6 refined it, 2.7 has been, you know, basically modernized it, and kind of improving it at a faster rate than the... Uh, Autodesk equivalent. So Blender is on a wonderful trajectory for getting better. But with the upcoming release of 2.8, one of the biggest areas where Blender is currently lagging is going to be massively improved, and that's the viewport rendering. And for game developers, this is going to be huge. Now, I'm looking at 2.8. Um, you can now, one of the nice things Blender Foundation is doing is making preview releases available. And this is far off. This is a 2018 release. So this is by all means, or by no means whatsoever, a stable production ready thing. If it crashes during this presentation, I wouldn't be shocked. But specifically, what we are going to look at is the new and improved viewport rendering. And this is an area where the renderer in Blender has struggled for a long time. And when you're a game developer, this is kind of a pain in the ass because what you want to do is have your scene look as much like your scene is going to look in Unity or Unreal Engine or Godot or wherever you're going. And one thing all of those have embraced is PBR, physically based rendering. This is the new norm. So what they have done is created a new render, EEVEE, -E -E, um, for Blender, which we're going to check out today. And it is the future, and you're going to be probably jaw dropped. If, if you have the same experience I did. And really, that's all we're going to do today. Now, to get kind of an idea of what we're dealing with, here is Blender 2. I think it's 7, 8. So it was released this year. It's one of the more recent um, solid releases of Blender. And you can see a 3D preview in here. And you've got more or less flatter shading in this scenario, not um, you know detailed textures going on. So that's your viewport. Nice and responsive. Works well enough. But if you want to get a more accurate rendered version of what you're dealing with, then what we do is we switch over to rendered mode. Down here, you see, so we're dealing with either material or texture mode at this point. We're going to switch this to rendered, and you're going to see where the renderer falls apart. And essentially, what this is doing is a mini real-time rendering of your scene. And I actually selected it. You'll notice my computer is currently in not happy mode. That is because of the way that viewport rendering works. And here we go. Now we're updating. Uh, the initial render is quite slow. Some of this is going to get cached, and it's going to speed things up. But if you want to see kind of like a more representative real time, you know, with properly rendered lights and materials, etc. kind of scene, this is where you go. Now, this is not a trivial scene we're dealing with, but it is indicative of what you might be dealing with when you're working with a typical game environment. Um, and it's still rendering in. It's, it's doing a bunch of um, ray traces as we speak. So it's up to 10 of 20 of them. 11, 12. You know, you're going to see the quality gets a little bit better. And you can actually control how many rays are cast. Uh, but if you don't cast enough rays, you get these dot patterns in your end result. This is because we're using the Cycles Renderer here too, by the way. Um, so, there you go. We're about there. 20 samples are now been done. Uh, it should get a little bit clearer. So basically, this is your real-time mode. Now, if I want to, like, reposition and see how things look in the scene, I can do that. You know, it's interactive. But as you can see... It ain't real time. So now it's going to do the update, and it's going to do its 20 samples. And then the end result still isn't anywhere near real time. So this is the existing model. So if you want to look at things you know, as lit as they should be in your world, it's not ideal. Now let's jump forward and take a look at Blender uh, 2.8 pre. And I should warn you before we go ahead, one of the things that they had to do to make it to bring us into the modern world is bump the minimum OpenG level, uh, OpenGL level. And right now, Blender runs on everything, your, your toaster on down. Um, so pretty much, if you've got software rendering, you could probably still run Blender. Going forward, you're going to need OpenGL 3.2 or higher. Uh, that basically means you're going to need either a very, very modern uh, built-in GPU or uh, CPU, like... Um, you know, uh, an Intel 620, for example, Iris 620, you can probably render it. But you're going to need a fairly modern GPU, something from the last two or three years. But it's still not an outrageous requirement to go to 3.2. And my goodness, is the trade-off worth it? So let's switch over uh, to Blender 2.8. Now, I have to worry, warn you, I can't do the exact same seats because the... Um, the setup for a, a PBR scene is a completely different workflow. You, you use a different texturing flow. You have different properties, etc. So I'm going to use uh, just 
another comparable scene that Blender has made available for you to download. And coincidentally, if you go to the 2.8 screen, um, scroll on down far enough and you can get a number of these. So I've got this one downloaded and this one downloaded. Uh, so if you wanna play with the actual scenes I'm working with to test out 2.8, uh, do do so. And another thing I should say before moving on, it's not just about rendering. 2.8 has a number of other features. There's an improved grease pencil. Um, there is a better workflow for assets on the back end, that kind of stuff. It's a very foundational release, but by far the biggest release feature for game developers specifically is going to be this new viewport renderer. All right, enough preambling. Let's jump in and take a look at it. So existing, yeah, new. Yeah, that is not a rendering, that is not a picture, that is the viewport in action. So I pan around. Okay, you know what? It's gonna be slow because this guy is killing me in the background. So let's get rid of that. All right, so now we have Blender running, real-time viewport, that is the new EEV, EEV, EE renderer in action. So as you can see here, we are talking way better fidelity. This is very, very pretty. We can come in, we can zoom around, and the lighting is updating real time. So this is basically what you can expect to see when you export out to your game engine. It is night and day how much improved this actual render is going to be. And then you can see it's not just for show. Uh, switch over here to, okay, edit mode. And we've got our, our modifiers on the go. There are some things that don't seem to be working yet. For example, I can't put it into wireframe rendering on top. That doesn't seem to do anything other than possibly crash me. And you'll also find that the user interface has been uh, rejigged a bit. So you'll see the, uh, um, the shading mode. Uh, you really can't set it anymore. So before you switch between uh, like a material wireframe um, shaded and then rendered were the different options, uh, that option has been taken out. It is no longer part of your view. So it's set this way. Uh, but this is the future and this just blows my mind how much of an improvement this is. This is exactly what it's going to look like when it actually gets into your game engine. Now on top of this guy, there's another guy that they've added as well. And this is a different renderer. This one is instead the clay renderer. And this is one of those nice things when you're actually doing model and you want a more flat shaded look on your models, you can see there, it gives you, um, you know, a really nice, clean, crisp look. None of the uh, textures behind. Plus, it's a lot um, cleaner on your uh, CPU to deal with. And we kind of over here to this guy, we can actually modify how the render settings work. So we can change how the environment goes by clicking here. We'll bring up new render settings. And then we can change the environment on the go. So you see more of a gold um, exterior. We can go to blue. Uh, and you can change like so but the real star you know this i think is where you would go and do the majority of your modeling the weird thing is there's almost no documentation or talking about what this guy exists for or why it's there and in fact the 2.8 branch in general is pretty much completely undocumented which makes sense it's still under development but if you want to learn more you're going to have to learn via trial and error because this stuff isn't really documented at all but my God, do I look forward to this being the, the new full release. Going back to the uh, the built-in viewport renderer is gonna be painful going forward. And it's one of those areas with Blender that I've struggled with from day one, like, you know, trying to actually get a good idea of what you're dealing with. And then some things would be cycles, some things would be built in, uh, some things would be um, only show up when you rendered, etc. So it was really hard to actually figure out what your scene was gonna look like really until you exported it. But now with this particular workflow, it's gonna, it's going to look the same in your game engine as it does in your editor. And that's going to be a huge time saver. And as you can see, it is a nice, smooth environment. This is a, a laptop running a GeForce GTX 970M. And this is a um, very much in progress renderer that we're dealing with here. But take a look at this. Our environment here is, uh, let's see. Oh, let me see. Do I select all? Get out of it. Oh, I can't do it. Uh, we're talking several hundred thousand polygons in this particular scene and not a blip with, you know, advanced lighting going on. Uh, you know, I just, I can't stop speaking, you know, emphatically about how cool this actually is. I'll go ahead and open a much more complex scene. Um, like this guy is the temple download, which you can see right here. And it was 110 megabytes or something for, uh, by the way, it's going to take me a second to load this, as you can see right here. And hopefully we don't get a crash because, like I said, this is a very um, in-process uh, design we're dealing with here. But let's go ahead and yeah, 
now we get our render window being the primary window. Oh, merge you down, merge you over. There you go. So here we're dealing with a much more complex scene with environmental lighting going on. And you would think that this is a rendering, and it isn't. This is real time how your game actually is going to look. And this is not trickery. These are all uh, polygonal objects. Um, I can go ahead and move things at my heart's content. So if I go ahead and do a G, whatever I have selected. Oh, I've got the ground selected. That's not what I wanted selected. All right, turn 3D manipulator on so I know what I'm actually doing. Ooh, we might be experiencing a crash here. Nope. All right, let's grab this guy. All right, I still have my train selected. It doesn't really matter. Really, at the end of the day, though, it is staggering how far along this real-time viewport rendering is coming. And, and this is, you know, one of the most impressive things I have seen them do um, yet. And again, we've also got, you know, the clay renderer, which works in this mode as well. And you can deal with, you can see the underlying detail that we're actually dealing with for this scene. It's, it's, it's quite impressive. So really, that's it for now. Unfortunately, I'm teasing you with something that's coming out in 2018. So this is very, very, very far off. Uh, but, and I don't know when in 2018, uh, judging by some of the stability uh, issues I'm having and how fundamental this is to Blender, I would be surprised if it's later in 2018, but at least you know that the future is pretty damn bright and it's just staggering how much improved this renderer is. So to the team that built it, uh, kudos to you. Um, so that's all we're going to cover for today. Hope you found that interesting. Hope you're looking forward to it and excited to see this as much as I am. If you're not a Blender user at all, you're probably looking at this going, eh. And that's fine. But if you are a Blender user, I think you can see the power of what is coming. This is a, a really impressive upgrade. So I really hope that they have success and this gets integrated soon and integrated smoothly because this is going to make Blender just that much more viable, that much more of a competitor to its peers. And of course, that much more useful in a modern game development workflow where everything has gone towards the PBR route. So it's nice to see Blender uh, taking shape and doing it so well. All right, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, do, of course, click that like, subscribe, etc., etc. And I will see you all later on. Bye.